Good morning, everyone. So glad to have you back with me for story time with Rob, and I hope you're having a fabulous week. We've had some nice rain, which has been really great. Today, we're going to have a bit of a history lesson, and it's a good one, and it's one that I know you're going to remember. So I want to see if you can figure it out before I get to the end. Um, many of you will. Some of you are going to be pretty surprised when I get there. So enjoy. This one is called the Suez Lighthouse. In 1856, Frenchman Auguste Bartholdi vacationed in Egypt. Despite the strange food, ambiguous flies, and oppressive heat, and the continual disorder which might be referred to as Pharaoh's Revenge, the young man was entirely captivated by that exotic and wonder-filled land. Auguste especially admired the Egyptian art and architecture, the marvelous ancient sculptures, the sheer surfaces, and the clear, forceful lines. Bigness had always awed Auguste, and now here he was, his feet in the sands where Bigness was born, the pyramids, the Sphinx, the Nile. How incredible! the Frenchman mused, that a solitary pathway for the transportation of pyramid stones would take a hundred thousand men over ten years to make. Seeing the myriad man-made marvels for himself, August was driven to an inexorable conclusion. All true art expresses the power of an idea. Remember that as you hear the rest of the story. For during the young man's Egyptian adventure, he met and befriended a fellow Frenchman named Ferdinand de Lesseps. And Ferdinand had an appropriately grand-scale dream for his grand-scale land. He wanted to join the Mediterranean and the Red Sea by a watery thread, a passageway for ships linking east to west across the great isthmus of the Suez. Such an accomplishment would reduce a voyage of over a thousand miles around the African continent to one of only 105. Ferdinand's plan was considered mildly amusing by most. Young August not only took it seriously, but he suggested a contribution of his own. When Ferdinand had finished his waterway, he, August, would build a lighthouse at its entrance. A huge lighthouse, twice the size of the Sphinx, more than a mere structure, it would express the idea, the beacon of Western civilization shining eastward. Ferdinand was intrigued by August's proposal, and both men agreed that their dreams deserved to come true. Well, Ferdinand's did. You see, in 1859, having won the approval of the authorities concerned, Ferdinand began the challenging project, which would require a decade to complete. And today, the whole entire world takes for granted the Suez Canal. As for Auguste, he spent years refining a design for the Suez Lighthouse. While the canal was under construction, he made sketches and clay models, each varying slightly from the others, until at last he was satisfied. Yet while he encountered much enthusiasm for his creation, even among members of the Egyptian government, the Frenchman did not discover what his lighthouse needed most which was the money to actually build it. You would have liked his design, however. It was quite original. It was a lighthouse in the shape of a colossal robed woman. One arm stretched heavenward, a torch in her hand. Its rejection was not a total loss, however. I understand that a few years later, another country sought the services of sculptor Auguste Bartholdi, and they received them. All your life, 
you've been under the impression that the Statue of Liberty was designed especially, exclusively, for us. Well, well, now you know the rest of the story. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope you enjoyed that little history lesson, and until tomorrow, be safe.